It's day two of Rally Poland, returning to the WRC after a five-year absence and led by world champion Sebastian Ogier, who describes this place as Finland, without the jumps. In other words, very fast. Well, before we return to the stages, back at the service park, a spot of World Cup fever has broken out in the shape of a penalty shootout. Not quite as much at stake as in Brazil right now. All a bit of fun for the WRC elite, some with more interesting events at the World Cup than others, of course. Not least, Sebastian Ogier. Allez, le bleu. OK, back to the serious business, and our next burst of high-speed action in Poland is in the shape of seven stages, including a trip over the border into Lithuania. Four runs scheduled either side of a remote service. That's the plan, at least. It won't work out quite that way, as we'll see shortly. Day two, though, starts in Poland with John. Stage four and the journey here, you know, has been part of almost 580 kilometers of road sections just to get to the seven stages today, Friday. And the road order remains the same as yesterday evening, so more roads to sweep for rally leader Sebastian Ogier. So it's heads down once again for the best man in this sport and his co-driver Julian Ingracia. Gary Matty Latvala has yet to get stuck into this weekend. Latvala handed Ogier a generous 23 seconds yesterday. On this stage, changing notes as he goes, he nicks back a tenth. But neither man is the quickest on this, the opening stage of the day. Zero point one quicker than Ogier, the smile's back. Yeah, the smile is back and Gar feels good. It's a really good feeling to drive again and I'm really enjoying really nice states, fantastic states. Absolutely like Finland and a really, really quick, nice corners. And uh, I wouldn't, uh, I just dreaming, dreaming on the, let's say on the state. Smiling, happy and quicker, but not as quick as this man, the fastest man in Poland today, Andrus Mikkelsen. His only problem is reading these corners well enough to decide if he, well, takes them fast or even faster. His rev limiter is working overtime. Mikkelsen wins stage four and he's rally leader once again. Speed doesn't frighten Britain's Chris Meek, although it does give his co-driver Paul Nagel sleepless nights every now and again, and that's his voice you can hear. Meek is happiest when he can open up his Citroen and go for it. Middle of a crest, one fifth. He's quicker than Latvala, he's quicker than Ogier, he keeps hold of third place. Now remember what we've been saying about reading corners here, how they creep up on you, especially in sixth gear. It happens to everyone, even the highly rated Thierry Nerville. Oh yes, hang on everybody. But knowing how to get out of a high speed spin like this is one of the many skills you need if you want to succeed here. and escape he does Robert Kubica is the reason that the World Rally Championship has come here to Poland he's glad his people can experience the buzz that the sport brings one or two of them have already helped to push him back onto these roads and he rewards today's spectators by turning in another fast time and moving back into the points places after yesterday uh, <laughs> circuit attitude I have to you know uh, think about that even if I know where I am I have to uh, don't get you know a circuit attitude to break so late and uh, today uh, 
there was very big braking into the junctions and I took it, to be honest, quite easy and also it's so fast that uh, yeah, I, I could go a uh, bit more, with more, bit more confidence, a bit quicker, but I think it uh, has been good stage and it's important. Uh, confidence is there after yesterday, so yeah, all good. Rookie Hayden Padden cut his teeth on the blisteringly quick roads of New Zealand. His co-driver John Kennard owns a vineyard on one of the islands there. Well, they should bottle whatever it was that produced this blistering pace. It's a vintage time. The second quickest, and Pat moves up a place in a sixth. Meanwhile, the cat and mouse between OJ and Mickelson continues. The Norwegian back on top after that quickest stage time. Less than half a second in it, though. Great battle just behind them, too. Less than four seconds separating Meek, Hannanen and Osberg. Robert Kvitsa back on the leaderboard after his earlier role. Just behind this man, Mika Hervenen. The Finn struggling here in Poland, tweeting to say he's lacking confidence and struggling with pace notes. The last thing you need on rapid stages like this. But not as bad as last time out in Sardinia, where a sudden fire wrecked his fiesta on the road section between stages, you'll recall. It's the most extensive fire damage car that I've ever had in my, uh, my time. Even the cylinder block uh, was melted. So, I mean, literally, you know, normally you could salvage things like the crankshaft, thing, but by the state of things like the cylinder block, then uh, there's definitely absolutely nothing that's salvageable. And even more worrying is we don't exactly still know at the moment, point in time what uh, what caused it. We know it started in the uh, in the right-hand rear wheel, uh, but whether it was a damper burst or a brake line or something like that, we, we still really don't know. An estimated £350,000 worth of WRC car up in flames, and the investigation into that fire continues as we now leave Poland and head over the border. And we're in Lithuania just for the day and it becomes the 32nd country that the championship has visited in its history and the softer damper conditions that you can see seem to have curbed the enthusiasm of tearaway rally leader Andreas Mikkelsen not by much mind you just eight tenths of a second but he hangs on to the rally lead by the skin of those shiny white teeth Sebastian Ogier wouldn't be cleaning these stages today if the sports rule makers had kept the qualifying stage that they had last year. That way, Ogier could have picked where he drove in the road order, but not now. He's just got to work through the pain, keep on ploughing through the sand and gravelly finds that litters these roads. The very first day of action in Lithuania produces another stage winner, and this is it. It's Norway's Mads Osberg. He and co-driver Jonas Andersen have been working together for a long time now. And this teamwork you can hear backs them their first stage win of the weekend. Gary Matty Latwell is in crisis. He's the first to admit that if he doesn't feel good, he doesn't drive well, and something is bothering him. Take it easy, Yari. Don't let the sound of your own wheels drive you crazy. Well, a disgruntled Latvala should try life in Chris Meek's car. Lithuania's roads are not like the fast open ones in Poland. Don Gannon's finest doesn't like the ruts that are developing. They slow his Citroen down. He drops a place on stage five and then almost loses another to Johanin and on stage six. He's driven almost 200 kilometers to get here and he's going backwards down the leaderboard. And knowing Meek, he's not a happy bunny at all. What can you do? There's nothing we can do. There's ruts over a foot deep after seven cars. Okay, sometimes the leader on the road gets uh, disadvantaged by cleaning. Here we're getting the disadvantage with ruts. Maybe I should have been leading the championship coming into uh, this rally. And much more on those ruts in just a moment, but it's world champion Ogier back in front, pushed hard though by Andreas Mikkelsen. Osberg up to third as Meek struggles, Hannanen dropping down to sixth, fellow Finn Hervelin up a couple of places. But the action is about to come to an abrupt halt. And here's why. 
There are those ruts Chris Meek was talking about. And the organisers indeed decide they are now too deep for the action to continue. They cancel stages seven and eight, the second pass through, in the interest of safety of both drivers and spectators. It's been a, a long trip for not so many kilometers in the stage. Uh, unfortunately, the two last stages now is, is cancelled because uh, the conditions are so rough and uh, I think it's okay for WRC cars, but uh, for the smaller cars uh, they seem to have a problem to get through and uh, then we have to cancel. We've seen during Wiki that the ground is very soft here and uh, the ruts were huge, I guess. We spent a day here for not so much racing time. I think it was the right decision to cancel because uh, as well for us uh, it's getting more and more dangerous when it's rough like this uh, because you can quickly lose the control of the car uh, because yeah, you, you cannot run a proper racing line. You, you just uh, follow the lines and uh, try to survive. Well, they've come a long way to do only half the job in Lithuania, but there's nothing for it but to head back across the border to Poland for the remaining stages of this second day. Now, Thierry Neuville's already had a day of it. Into a ditch in stage four, a spin in six, and now here in nine, towards the end of the day, more problems. Overheated rear brakes, along with a locked handbrake, apparently, all of which called for some impromptu roadside repairs. Nothing a good old thump with a spanner won't put right. Perhaps. Let's hear more now from Thierry about what went wrong. A uh, problem with the brakes. Uh, the car starts to lock the brakes uh, himself and uh, probably a problem with the cylinder or something. But we have to go and we will, we will see if it's happened again. Well, away from Neville's problems, the lead continues to change hands in that battle between the VW pair. Mickelson absolutely flying in nine. He wins that stage to go ahead of OJ, only for OJ to regain the lead in the final stage of the day, ten. Robert Kvitsa benefits from Neville's problems. He moves up to eighth, just behind Miko Herbenen. Rally Poland producing all sorts of intrigue and drama, and we are only warming up. Coming next, one of the most extraordinary days action of the season.